Hello, I want to thank you all for inviting me into your studio. In this video series, you will also be hearing from two other presenters, Dr. Marilyn Proctor Gibbons presenting 2D design and Marty Loftus presenting 3D design. Just a little bit about me to welcome you. I've been teaching at Diller Center for the Arts in Fort Lauderdale now for 21 years as an AP Studio Art teacher teaching AP drawing and AP 2D design. I've also been an AP Studio Art consultant for the last eight years and an AP Studio Art reader for the past nine years. Lesson overview. These are some of the uh, writing and inquiry statement lesson overview skills we'll be looking at, and these are some of the key course skills that I want to just go over briefly. We were looking at uh, 3A, identifying and writing materials, processes, and ideas. And these are things that will be used when you're creating art and design within the drawing portfolio. 3B, describing how works of art and design demonstrate synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas. 3C, describe how works of art and design demonstrate 2D, 3D, or drawing skills and 3D, identifying writing questions that guide a sustained investigation through art. What you need to know. There's an essential question that shows up in the CED, and that essential question starts off by asking, what informs why, how, and what artists and designers make? What we're gonna be keying in on here is the experiences you, you guys as students often will have and the questions that that will spark in your investigation during uh, your portfolio investigation. And big idea three will ask you guys to present art and design. By now, all of you should at least have a general statement written. But if not, look at the work you've created and start to develop draft statements. These are the spaces where you will communicate about your portfolio inquiry and will make it and, and uh, this stuff will actually make all the difference when you're uh, submitting your portfolio. So work on choosing your words wisely and keep it coherent. Up above, you'll notice that there are two statements you need to respond to. Identify the questions, uh, the question or questions or inquiries that guided your sustained investigation. Statement two will ask that you describe your sustained investigation and how it shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision guided by your question or inquiry. So the space that's provided below for you to write that inquiry statement has about 1,200 characters, and you really want to make sure you maximize that space because it's really not a whole lot of room, but you guys should just be able to get enough information in there to be able to elaborate on what you've been creating. And down off on the bottom right here, you guys will notice there's a box here, and that's the box for your images. So there's additional information that will go in for your work in that area. And you'll notice there's a material spot for information and also a process spot for information. And there's a maximum of 100 characters in both of those spaces, which is very, very uh, small amounts of space. So you really have to hone down what you want to say for those areas. Let's move on and take a look at writing your inquiry statement. There are often different types of things that you want to look at when you're uh, writing your statement. And one of those things is you want to look at the action verbs that you're using uh, inside of your inquiry statement. So what you see here is a list of uh, action verbs, and these are action verbs that I typically share with my students. And you can find action verbs online uh, in different listings. And if you look at some of these highlighted action words, these are some really good action words that you can use in terms of the action verbs for your inquiry statement as you begin your writing. And there are more here as well. It's an A to Z of action verbs that are listed on the sheet that I pass out to those students. And you can look back on this video a little later and check out some of these highlighted uh, action verbs that I have here 
for you to be able to use when you're writing your own inquiry statement. Now, as we move on and we take a look at what you're doing in terms of some more of these key descriptors, you see 3A is asking you guys to identify in writing materials, processes, and ideas used to make works of art and design. And I'm just very gonna quickly go through some of these key descriptors, just pointing out some of the key parts of them. 3A.1, you know, we're looking at how you use all sorts of materials to create your work. And some of this uh, work that you're creating, we're just looking for the basics you'll need to begin some of your writing in terms of, uh, you know, the types of materials that you're using. 3A.2, you know, there are different things you need to observe along the way when you're working on the materials, processes, and ideas for your work. And you need to observe in bullet point one, observe the changes being made in all the work carefully. Because as you go along and you're creating all of these different types of works for your sustained investigation, it's important to note all the changes that are coming about in the work and to note that. Bullet two, you also want to consider what are the important components in your work. You know, as you look at the work, look for those important components that you see that are taking place in the work in terms of composition and how things are being set up. You know, is it still working as a sustained investigation even? You know, so these are things that are very important. And lastly, use clear, concise words. Stay away from being wordy in your writing and get to the point in the quickest way possible. For those of you have, who have very little to say, push yourself to elaborate a bit, be more uh, involved in the writing process by explaining your points even further. Now, if we take a look at 3A.3, something important to look at here is uh, you wanna make strong connections between the visual evidence you are seeing in the work and the words used in your writing as you you know, list your sustained investigation or inquiry statement. 3A.4, written descriptions of components used in your work can further develop writing skills. So you wanna get constructive feedback as well as hone your writing skills by using that constructive feedback. So make sure you get critiques from your professors and your other classmates virtually by connecting with them. So try not to, you know, work at home alone without getting some sort of feedback coming in. 3A.5, written identification of materials, processes, and ideas. Documentation is very, very important in the portfolio and can and should be shared with your uh, viewers inside of this portfolio. So be sure to document, document, document whenever possible so this stuff can also be included within your portfolio. So let's look at two samples on the AT Central site for comparison as it relates to your inquiry. And before we move into that, I also want to take you guys, uh, you know, just to have a quick look at the uh, scoring criteria within this section as it relates to inquiry. If you look at the uh, rubric, you'll note that there's a score range between one to three as it relates to your sustained investigation as it revolves around the inquiry section. And if you look closely at what it says in the area of a score range of one, the written evidence identifies an inquiry, but visual evidence does not relate to that inquiry. So does not relate. And if you look down below, it says it does not identify. If you move on to the second score descriptor, it moves away from not relating to relating. And down below, rather than not identifying, it demonstrates the uh, sustained investigation. And then the highest score point, you're looking at uh, evidence that identifies an inquiry and that guides the sustained investigation and visual evidence demonstrates the uh, sustained investigation. So let's move into the AT Central site now and take a look at a few examples of some student work. And we'll take a look at sample three and sample eight and take a look at how these two students went about writing their inquiry statements. So 
let's shift out of here and move towards that. There we are. So now we'll move on down and take a look at sample three. And this is inside of the AP Central site. So here what's listed is uh, student samples and uh, different uh, types of work for their sustained investigation. At the very top, there are eight samples that are listed in here for the drawing portfolio. So we'll take a look at sample three very quickly and then jump to sample eight. And I'm just gonna scroll to these rather quickly just so you can get a quick glance at them and what the student has created within their sustained investigation. you'll be able to access this same uh, image bank on the AP Central site. Some of you have probably already gone in and seen a lot of these images already yourself, which is great. And we're coming up on the last image here. Okay, and that's the student's portfolio. Now, if we take a look at the student's written evidence here in this portfolio, and let's read this statement very quickly and uh, take a look at what they have in here. These pieces concentrate on the theme of isolation, which became a gradually increasing part of my life as I matured induced by schoolwork that occupied more and more of my mind and the gray areas in my relationship, isolation took over as the driving force that furthered my distance from the people I care about. The distance grew so far that the only vehicle left to carry my emotions were my surroundings. These are glaring metaphorical, metaphorical visual, visualizations of what that isolation felt like. So, this student uh, uh, statement here in query, if you're reading that, you know, it's pretty strong as it relates to that work. And if we come down to the scoring category to see how the student scored in on their inquiry, we see they scored a three, which means that they're hitting on all of the uh, score points that we're looking for in terms of the uh, uh, sustained inquiry statement. So I just want to take a look at the next sample here, sample eight, and then we're gonna bounce out of this and then talk about this a little bit. I'm just gonna scroll back up to the top and quickly click on to sample eight. And we're just gonna make a comparison between these two works. So here's sample eight, and we'll scroll down to this work rather quickly as well. I just want you guys to get a quick look at it so you see what's happening in the work. There are 15 pieces here in these samples, which you guys would have originally submitted, but due to everything that's happening right now, you guys have the fortune, I would say, of having to submit 10. I think for most of you guys, you might already be done with your portfolio. It just has to be organized and submitted in the best possible way. So here we are coming up on the 15th image. And we'll take a quick read of this statement as well. For this sample, when I was first thinking of a sustained investigation, I found a quote by Leanne Taylor saying, we are all butterflies, earth is our chrysalis. I wanted to portray this idea that butterflies represent the human soul, and it is seen in many different cultures. And these souls are exploring their unknown by leaving the earth. 
and with the knowledge and wisdom they have come across, they had to become beautiful butterflies. So this is that student's uh, sustained investigation statement and inquiry statement. So let's move on down to take a look at the score point for this one and what they got for the inquiry statement. This student scored a one in terms of what they have written here. And that tells you they didn't quite meet all the uh, score point identifiers inside of what they have written here. So let's bounce back to the PowerPoint and make some comparisons between the two. And let's get into it a little bit deeper in terms of what they have going on here. So I'm just gonna switch screens again here. And move back to the PowerPoint. All right. So here in this student's uh, written inquiry statement, I just want to point out a few key items and some uh, vocabulary that might show up or some key words that might show up, I should say, that it, you might want to notice that might have even brought the student score towards a three. Here you see uh, in the student's writing their words that are represented. And these are uh, some of the same types of key uh, verbs that you might see in a lot of really good writing, concentrate, increasing, matured, occupied, driving, you know, further, grew, carry, glaring. So all key words to look at in terms of what they're writing. And these are really good action verbs that help to highlight what's written inside of the student's inquiry. And then if we compare the other student's writing, you know, this is a student that probably could have used, you know, a few, a few action verbs that could be a little better. And I've kind of crossed out what they had in there before and kind of substituted some information of my own. So when I was first, instead of thinking of a, considering my sustained investigation perhaps, uh, I found, I would probably substitute study, a quote by Leanne Taylor and, we are all butterflies, the earth is our chrysalis. I wanted to portray this idea that butterflies represent the human soul. So just substituting a few words in here to make this flow a little bit better, which could also highlight some of this information and make it more important. But not to mention, that's not the only thing that's not working here for this student. The artwork could also be stronger also. But in terms of the inquiry statement, I think this student could touch on a few other things inside of this statement to develop it even further. Let's move on from here. And then these are just a few uh, key course descriptors inside of here. I'm just going to look at very quickly. Synthesis of materials, processes, and idea. Everything is working uh, very well in the portfolio in terms of this key descriptor. And then there's terrific command of the elements and principles of art typically in this type of work. Overall, there is good originality, craftsmanship, presentation, and quality. 3B, describe relationships among material processes and ideas. And some key things to key in on is, uh, you know, you want to identify important components. They can be pointed out, they can be listed, they can be discussed in terms of your writing. Uh, you also want to look for similarities and differences inside of your writing about your work, which is very important because there's going to be a lot of different things happening within your work. Also, how can you give examples of visual evidence in your writing and where you see those connections in your writing? So you want to try to show synthesis also inside of your writing. You know, if you have work that's very strong, make sure you highlight it in terms of your writing. So we see the synthesis, not only visually, but we also see that in your writing as well. So we are looking for the preponderance of evidence in all of the work. And all things need to be working, not just one or two. Documentation can be included in the portfolio, and that's 3B3. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure you're documenting, documenting, documenting but also include that in your portfolio. And then if we quickly look at two other uh, portfolios here, and we're not gonna go to the AP site to look at this, we're just gonna wrap up here. Let's quickly look at uh, two writing samples, you know, 
that you would see on the AP Central site as well. And you can go to the site to take a look at these. I have them here in the PowerPoint. But the same uh, scoring criteria applies and you're looking for those specific things. And in this statement, here are some of the key action verbs you might see inside of this particular statement that this student wrote. Fascinated, intimacy, bar em embracing, I'm sorry, uh, encountered expectations placed, presented, acutely aware, intersection, determining, presented. So inside of this student's inquiry statement, some of these uh, action verbs that you're seeing inside of here are, are very uh, good action verbs. They identify and they communicate exactly what's happening inside of the work. And this student actually scored a three on the inquiry in sample one. And we'll take a quick look at another sample here and look at some of the uh, key action verbs inside of this work. And this student actually scored a uh, two score on the inquiry. But if you look at their statement, it's a one line uh, statement, one sentence here. And it doesn't really give much information. So I would probably recommend, you know, if you have a statement where you only have a sentence, try to elaborate a little bit more and give a little bit more information. That way you can get into more key descriptors and describe a little bit more about what's happening in the work. Like I said, this is a, uh, this is a sample I won't go through uh, fully, but you can find it on the uh, AP website as well, and it's sample five. This student actually had some really good uh, documentation in terms of what they have in their portfolio, but they just didn't elaborate too much. And actually a lot of the elaboration happened in the second question. So just to debrief and summarize real quick, by now, all of you should have at least a general statement written. If you don't, make sure you get to that very quickly. There should be at least enough work there for you to begin that. Stay away from being wordy in your writing and get to the point in the quickest way. Look for connections in your writing that will show similarities and differences in the work. And keep in mind that the readers are looking for the preponderance of evidence in your work. So all things need to be working and not just one or two. Look to include action verbs in your writing to make your inquiry statement even richer. And lastly, remember to write about your documentation uh, you are including in the portfolio. So you can find the course skills inside of the CED. And some of the core skills that I've gone through and covered here are highlighted here on the far right. So you can go in and uh, dig into some of these yourself online. And with that, we will end off here and pass it off to Marilyn. Thanks for watching.
Hi there, I know Marilyn has the floor right now. I'm just gonna give a quick reminder to unmute so that we can all hear you. Let's get it in the right mode. Okay. All right. Hopefully you can hear me now. And again, uh, my name is Marilyn Proctor Gibbons, and I'm at Lincoln High School in Tallahassee, Florida. And I want you to uh, go with me uh, to talk a little bit about the 2D design portfolio. Uh, the question that some of you may be asking, uh, I need help. You may be stuck and you need to, to get your statement more coherent. You need to pull some things together. So this lesson will hopefully help you go through and refine your statement a little bit more. These are some reminders that you need to know the instructional goal for the course. Uh, the following learning outcomes should be addressed in the AP art and design courses, the ability to conduct a sustained investigation through practice, experimentation, and revision guided by questions. You should be able to skillfully synthesize materials, processes, and ideas, and articulate in writing information. Again, the CED page 12 has the core skills that you will need to make sure you understand. And this particular video lesson will cover Core skill three, which is communication and reflection. And as stated earlier, uh, we're going to be doing 3A, 3B, 3C, and 3D. When you're developing your inquiry question, uh, questions that guide the sustained investigation are typically formulated at the beginning of a portfolio development. And we're going to look at a couple of definitions. One very important one is uh, the definition of development as it relates to the 2D design portfolio. It is the furthering or advancing of the inquiry in the sustained investigation through in-depth exploration of materials, processes, and ideas. Students should formulate their inquiry or questions based on their own experiences and ideas. And these guided questions should be documented and further developed by the student throughout the sustained investigation. Remember, in addition to your artwork, you will have to submit a Question one, identify the inquiry or questions that guided your sustained investigation. And question two, describe how your sustained investigation shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision guided by your questions or inquiry. Keep in mind that for the written evidence, responses to these prompts are evaluated along with the images that you submit. And the most successful responses in terms of assessment are those that are clearly related to the images you submitted that directly and completely address the prompts and that provide evidence of inquiry based sustained investigation through practice experimentation and revision. Also, when you're writing your statement, you will be allowed to refer to slide numbers. So take the time to elaborate and direct the reader to the information that you want to elaborate on. Also, you will not be evaluated on spelling, grammar, or punctuation. Let's also go over this. Be found in your rubric will be the written evidence, visual evidence, identity, I mean, sorry, identify, inquiry, guides, relates, and demonstrates. If you look at the scoring criteria, in order to earn the highest score, which is a three, you must have written evidence that provides information that supports your inquiry. Your question must guide the sustained investigation, not just be related, and your visual evidence demonstrates the sustained investigation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to assess or look at a portfolio at the AP Central website and practice the portfolio. 
So the written evidence shown in this slide is from sample five on the AP Central website. And I want to give you a few minutes to kind of look this over to uh, give yourself an idea of what the artist who wrote this was trying to get across. And then we will also look at the work in a minute. So at this point, I'm going to let you uh, kind of listen. I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's very short. And we'll go from there. So this particular person said, at first, I just drew things neatly and stylized, making art that was simple and neat. I drew cute girls because they were the ones, one thing that I grew up drawing often. So then I would ask myself, how can I draw them while showing off my technical skill? Then I would work on my fundamentals and started on working with observation. I often asked myself, what personable in-reach item of interest can I draw next? after each beach I did. From memories to save images on my phone to the corner of my room, I painted piece after piece, developing my technique while I drew what was around me. So that's basically what the artist wrote. And in a minute, we're gonna to go to the next slide, which will give us an idea, um, we'll get an idea of what the work looks like that goes with this. And again, remember these are available on AP Central, I just, borrow the images so I can kind of break it down a little bit. So I know we're supposed to be kind of guessing what the score might be, but we're just going to break it down a little bit. Just food, etc. And so instead of there being a single large inquiry, there's a broad and I have poor internet connection out here in the wilderness where I live, so I apologize in advance for that. Instead of a single large inquiry, there is a broad approach to the inquiry um, based on the student's life and interest. So sometimes the broadness is not a good idea. It's sometimes better to, to uh, focus more. So let's see if this hint hurts the uh, student or helps the student in the end. Um, the question stated, deal with technical skills and what to draw also. So the, the student did ask some questions, which, you know, there's supposed to be an inquiry, but were these questions uh, questions that could help uh, growth and show uh, practice, um, revision, experimentation, and so forth. And then the visual pieces, we'll, we'll look at quickly. So these are the cute girls. So we have several different techniques used material-wise. There was also a collection of objects that the artist drew for this work. And remember the previous portfolio requirements were 15 and now they're 10. So, you know, make sure that your your um, visual evidence is pretty, you know, centered around a focal point instead of having it too many uh, spread out over too many different um, topics. Because here you want focus, you want to be able to um, defend your uh, written evidence with your with your written evidence. Okay. So we've seen the work, we've written, this, we've um, read the written statement. So let's find, pair the writing with the rubric and see if we can make some sort of uh, final conclusion to this. So again, if you read this, and I'm not gonna reread it, but what we, we need to learn while we're uh, rereading it is, is the written evidence, this is a three, is the written evidence, does the written evidence identify an inquiry? that guides the sustained investigation? And does the visual evidence demonstrate the sustained investigation? Or does the written evidence um, identify an inquiry that relates to the sustained investigation? All right, and the visual evidence demonstrates the sustained investigation. Or um, one, the written evidence identifies an inquiry, but visual evidence does not relate to the inquiry. Or written evidence does not identify an inquiry. So these are our three choices, and um, 
I'm going to give you a few minutes to make a decision of which way you want to go with that, a one, two, or three. And I'm going to go ahead and reveal because we have to keep going. And so the answer to this particular, or the score of this particular portfolio any evidence of inquiry. So focusing your questions more, uh, focusing your um, topic, not having pieces that are small chunks of things, but one large, inc one large um, inquiry is the best route to go with this particular, uh, for what was a better route for this particular for person. Maybe focusing more on the girls than the other two um, subjects. All right, we're going to go ahead and try this one more time and we're going to look at another portfolio. So here, this is sample two on the website. So again, if you wanna take more time to look at these and examine them more for yourself, you can. This one's a little lengthier. Um, the particular artist's um, written evidence is inside of the blue box and it basically talks about, uh, I'll go ahead and read it quickly. There are always two windows, two sides to a window, one that looks inside and the other outside. Unpredictable things happen when both sides are occupied at the same time. An encounter is inevitable. Two sets of eyes, a set of realms or a familiar face. It is true that windows can act as a border and yet they can still be a ground for the two sides to merge. The works I've produced changed over time to include one side of the windows, then the other. At one point, it is the reflection that comes into view and the photo photographer is exposed. As the photographer, I show what I see through the window I carry with me, my camera. I pick, up, I pick what to frame, what to filter, and what to bring to attention, what to erase. My camera is the border between my interior world, my mind, and the exterior where I exist. The art I produce is like the reflections on the windows where the border between the two worlds disappear and only the world defined by view of the outside merging with the inside only to be seen from the outside again. It is up to the onlooker to place where the own where their own borders are. All right, so that is basically the statement. And then the visual evidence, I just kind of put the photos together for you. So here you've got the window. Near the bottom, the two, um, some of the images were repeated. The one of the, the, the very first slide was repeated in the, in the third row. And then the last one is the one he was talking, the artist was talking about, he or she, double, triple layering, the view of the outside merging with the inside. There are mirrors, um, there's, there's la lots of layers that are involved there. For this particular portfolio, uh, we are starting with the three written evidence identifies an inquiry that guides a two written evidence identifies an inquiry that relates or three or one written evidence identifies an inquiry but visual evidence does not relate. So I'm not going to pro prolong the answer here because we must go on. So uh, this particular portfolio received a two, a three, sorry. <laughs> clearly identifies the depth and clarity of the student intent. Beautiful portfolio, very well done. All righty. At this point in time. See us again.
Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm not sure uh, if uh, I, I missed that last part from Marilyn. I think we locked up again. Um, so my name is Marty Loftus. Uh, I'll be guiding you through our, our 3D work today. And we'll make this pretty quick. I think um, we've covered a lot of ground here today. Um, but this will just give you a little bit of extra context in terms of what this looks like through uh, 3D lens. So let's take a look at this. And we can skip through a few of these things. Um, once again, my name is Marty Loftus. I teach at Denver School of the Arts here in Denver, Colorado. Um, a couple of things uh, that we do need to know. Once again, just a reminder that we do have a shift. Um, you're now going to be submitting three works uh, instead of five into your selected works and 10 images into your sustained investigation. Again, we've looked at this inquiry quite a bit. Um, from uh, both of our previous presenters. One of the things I want to look at here is the verbiage here, just the differentiation between the two and the three, and they're so similar, but it's the difference between the idea of an inquiry that relates to your sustained investigation and written evidence that guides a sustained investigation. So it's not just about making connections. It's the idea is we can read that initial statement and see that that was the guiding force behind all of the work that you've submitted visually into your sustained investigation. So uh, Celestin alluded to this earlier, I'm gonna be just a little bit more specific and you can pause this at your leisure to see this a little bit more clearly. But one of the things you wanna do is make sure that you are referring to this as your sustained investigation and no longer as a concentration. That's an old uh, term that we used uh, with our legacy portfolio. Now we're really looking at this as more an investigation rather than a concentration. Um, including some of these words into your statement really shows that you are internalizing the type of rubric, ter rubric terms that we use, like identify or analyze, determine or establish, uh, to guide, to drive, to steer, to instruct, to relate, connect, correlate, bridge, demonstrate, exhibit, establish, and, and determine. And again, the idea that this is an inquiry. So if you can use terms like to question, to seek, to search, and to discover, that's what we're doing. Uh, in this sustained investigation that should be reflected in your visual work but also in your written component as well so again i think we can move through this pretty quickly i'm not going to read this i think you can easily pause this to read it at your leisure but for this first student portfolio essentially what we're looking at is a uh, wearable type of portfolio which we do see uh, quite a few times uh, during the course of the reading um, this one specifically focuses on works that demonstrate the idea of this student's dress code. So uh, an interesting take on a type of portfolio that we often see. I'm not gonna show you all the images, just a few of these students' works to give you a sense of context with what the student's portfolio looks like. So again, all wearable work, all of these works address this student's school's dress code. So, that first part, and I've done a similar thing here where, again, you can pause this, but I want you to really pick out some of these key terms and phrases, the idea of this, once again, not being a concentration, but a sustained investigation, but to capture, to create work that corresponds, uh, interpreted, portray. All of these terms are great ways uh, for readers to look at this and understand that you understood as the artist that you are trying to create some sort of inquiry that's driving all of the works that you're seeing inside of that visual interpretation uh, of these, uh, of your sustained investigation. So if we look here, that student written evidence really is pretty clear in the first statement. And that second part is really to address specific pieces that you've done in your uh, sustained investigation and how those reflect what you've done in your inquiry. So that's really a lot of supportive written evidence. Um, this was an excellent uh, sustained investigation, um, and this student did score a three. So it's the idea that the student did indicate from the beginning that this body of work was created uh, to really reflect this, uh, this dress code that they had at their school. And again, some of the feedback from our readers uh, talk about how this describes choices, that they were deliberate. Um, each piece was uh, made to further this investigation, to further that inquiry. A couple of statements that they made in that second part of limiting themselves to black and white textiles and the re reason and rationale behind that. The idea that another one of the pieces was made because uh, it would limit their creative freedom and expression. 
again, the idea that two separate garments could reflect that inquiry, but in two different ways, shows a broad spectrum of ways to approach this. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is an idea of a portfolio that in some ways we do see fashion design pieces, but exploring this uh, serious topic in a very different way with humor and with sarcasm, um, this investigation uh, wasn't only successful in the shape of the clothes, uh, but the surface manipulations, as well as the documentation. And again, that's so important uh, that that photographic documentation and the work itself really does reflect what you've done in your statement. So we're gonna look at one more uh, sustained investigation. Again, you can pause this and read it at your leisure, um, but this is a, a relatively simple one. Um, the concentration was uh, done in the idea of using this variety of materials to cut into do different shapes um, and the idea of the different levels and different points of view uh, to make these pieces um, building one on top of the other. So let's just take a look at a few slides. We won't show the entire uh, sustained investigation, but you should be able to get a pretty good idea of the context of what this student has created. So again, after we look at that first uh, part of the written evidence, the second part is really just building upon that and talking about specific pieces. Again, you can certainly pause this at your leisure, read through the whole thing, um, but let's talk a little bit more about what this student achieved as a score and the rationale behind that. So, one of the reasons I chose this one to take a look at is if you really think about the work that was being done here, uh, the work was very strong. Um, if this was, and this was a portfolio that was submitted last year in the legacy portfolio, it probably scored very high. But in terms of this specific part of their scoring with the inquiry and with the written portion of that, we see that this uh, student has scored uh, one. Um, so that means that the written evidence of an inquiry is there, but visual evidence does not relate, or the written evidence does not identify an inquiry. So if you really go back and, and take a look at this a little bit more closely, it really just talks about the process of creating the work, but not the inquiry. It comes close at one point, or they talk about the different levels and different points of view, um, and with a little bit more description, they probably could have been there. Um, as an example, uh, the reader says that an inquiry into methods for exploring ways of creating depth and wall-mounted sculpture might have you know, propelled this into uh, scoring commentary of maybe a two or even higher. Um, but one of the things that they lack is even talking about why. You know, what is it about this act of layering that really is interesting to the student and why is this something that they really wanted to understand through that process of layering? So again, um, just a couple quick things to think about uh, as you begin to uh, revise your commentary. And that's, I think, one of the things that you want to take away from this is if you have already done your inquiry statement, come back to it. Check it out. See how you can improve that work just like you've spent so much time on your visual revision. Can you do the same thing with this written component, which is an important part of your final score? Clearly identify your inquiry. What are those essential questions that are gonna be driving your investigation? Uh, consider, again, addressing your motivation. What did drive you to consider these questions? What is it about this investigation that made you curious? And think about that synthesis. Your written evidence should also describe how your sustained investigation shows practice, experimentation, and revision. Um, we've mentioned this at the end of these videos. We wanna make sure that you know that we are aware that not all students have access to the internet or to an electronic device. Um, we're working on solutions to help students get uh, what they need to show their best work. Again, if you need mobile tools or connectivity or know someone who does, uh, you can reach us directly to let us know at cb.org slash tech. So uh, again, if you know anyone who might need uh, any help with those sorts of things, uh, just reach out and let us know. Again, I'd like to thank Celestin and Marilyn uh, for your part of this presentation. Uh, please uh, come back. We're going to be submitting some more videos here in the near future, including our next one, which is going to deal a little bit more with revision, experimentation, um, and documentation in your portfolio. So again, thank you so much, and we will see you next time.